All right. Good afternoon, everybody. We are starting a new unit. It's a direct feedback from our last unit, basically. So it's just moving forward. Our last unit was all about the circulatory system. This one's all about the cardiovascular system, which of course is about the heart. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about the heart as far as what's going on here. The goals for this unit, learn the anatomy of the heart. So um, there's quite a bit of structures in the heart that we need to learn and, and better understand. Comprehend the path that blood takes. That can be a rather uh, detailed process. Uh, so I enjoy learning that stuff. I think it's interesting. Um, I don't think it's gonna be too problematic for any of us necessarily speaking. Uh, and then finally, understand how heart rate works and what can cause changes in heart rate, AKA we get to talk a little bit about some vitals and the information associated to vitals. So that includes heart rate, that includes blood pressure. So we're gonna talk about that stuff as well. So the cardiovascular system, this slide is honestly more review of circulatory content. It is a closed system of the heart and blood vessels. The heart pumps the blood. The blood vessels allow the blood to circulate to all parts of the body. That seems rather self-explanatory. The function of the cardiovascular system is to deliver oxygen and nutrients and to remove carbon dioxide and waste. Sounds good. Where do we find the heart? The heart is found in the thorax in between the lungs, as we know, right, in the chest area. And the apex of it, or the top part, is going to be directed towards the left hip. So it's slightly on a left tilt. So that's why it rests on your left lung, making your left lung a little bit smaller, right? Uh, what about the size of the heart? So it turns out that the size of the heart is relative to the creature, the size of the creature. So if you compare us to elephants and whales, for instance, our hearts are going to be much smaller than those animals. But if you compare us to mice, our hearts are going to be much larger. A good way to identify the size of your heart is if you clench your fist like so, and then you grab your fist like this, that's approximately the size of your heart, right? Now, it does vary depending on the person. Uh, I'm a larger individual, so I expect my heart to be a little bit larger compared to somebody who's smaller than me. Granted, it's not like my hearts are going to be two times the size. That should not be the case. Uh, the size of the heart is typically, or the, the weight of the heart, should we say, is typically going to be a little less than one pound. Here we're able to see a lot of things that we've seen before in respiratory system. Here's the lungs, here's the heart. You can also see some devices being used. These are like forceps for like a surgical procedure to peel the lungs away. Remember, the lungs are elastic tissue, so this isn't necessarily damaging the lungs, but you need to be able to peel this stuff away in order to better see the heart. We're not going to worry too much about this. This is talking about the outer covering. We talked about in the lungs back in respiratory system how there's this outer covering of the lungs that help to reduce any friction. Same idea here. The heart has an outer covering that helps to reduce any friction when the heart is beating and rubbing up against other tissue. Okay, this we do need to discuss. There are three layers of the heart. We have the epi, myo, and endocardium. So first of all, if you notice the suffix, they're all the same. Cardium, cardium, and cardium. So all of them have the same suffix because cardium as a suffix or cardia, which you may see that as well, simply means heart. Now the prefix is what really tells us what we need to know. Epi as a prefix means outer. You may remember from our integumentary system content that we talked about the epidermis, which is the outer layer of skin. So outer, epi, that's, going, that's where we see that connection forming right? It's also the parietal pericardium and some connective tissues found here, but we don't need to dive too deep into that. Myo, super easy one. Myo is going to mean middle and muscle. So for myo, the way I remember this is I think I use some basic alliteration. Myo, middle, muscle. Myo, middle, muscle. Boom. No problem. Endo is the last layer of the heart, and endo, simply put, means inner. So the innermost layer of the heart is going to be the endocardium. So for our purposes, you should be able to identify that the heart has three layers. And of those three layers, you can identify it by the epicardium, the myocardium, and then the endocardium. Not bad. Pretty straight, straightforward. All right. Moving on from here. Here we see what the heart looks like as far as um, an external heart anatomy. There's a lot going on here. We don't need to learn everything here, but inevitably, inevitably, we will get more comfortable with this. So step by step, right? Step by step, we're going to get more and more comfortable with this. Finally, we're going to talk about the heart chambers. So let's talk about the chambers of the heart. First, before we even get into that, we should understand that the right and left side are separate pumps. It's all one organ. 
right? It's all the heart. But the right and left side do not interact with each other. They interact independently. So keep that in mind. So when it comes down to the heart, what I like to do is I, let, I just like to think of things in a simple format. So for instance, let's just change this back to red for now. For instance, I will just draw a cartoon. <laughs> That's a terrible looking heart. Let me try that one more time. I just, I'm going to draw like a cartoonish looking heart, something around those lines. It's closer than, <laughs> closer than last time. Okay. So there are four chambers. It can be broken down into four quadrants. So the top two quadrants are called the atria. The atria are known for being receiving chambers. So these are the parts of the heart that receive blood. They're going to be smaller by definition. So we have the right atrium and the left atrium. Atrium is the same thing as atria. It's just grammatical differences. So I'm going to put up here in shorthand, I'm going to put R A. And then here I'm going to put L A. Wait a second. Why did I just put on the left side of the picture the right atrium? Because it's a mirror image. You have to imagine it like it's in your body. So if you imagine it like it's in your body, then you can identify, oh, okay, that's the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. Next, we have the ventricles. The ventricles are going to be the larger parts of the heart. They're muscular, very, very muscular. And these are going to be considered the discharging chambers. The discharging chambers send blood out of the heart. So for that reason, they have to be rather large. So we have a right ventricle and a left ventricle. So simply put, I'm just going to go ahead and shorthand this to RV. And I'm going to shorthand this to R. Oh, not R, sorry. Forgot that the eraser was rather large. There we go. And I'm just going to shorthand this to LV. So simply put, the ventricles are on the bottom. And they just match where their top parts are found. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Simple enough. All right. So I think that's a great place to stop. Like I said, today was just supposed to be uh, for getting our feet wet, just getting the basics understood. So after we get the basics down, we can progress forward and have a better understanding of all this. All right. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great one.